Hello YouTubers, Destination Lego here and welcome to my review of the awesome Moss Isley Cantina set 75052. So this set is for me the first to review from the summer 2014 wave of Lego Star Wars sets. Um, if you want to see my unboxing video, which I recommend you do, there will be a link down in the description to this video. So go down there, click on that, and that will take you into the unboxing. So there you'll get a closer look at the box itself. Um, obviously the bags that come in the box and the instructions. Um, so this video is purely looking at the set and the minifigures that are included. So let's take our first look at the set now. Okay, so here we go. So here is our first look at Moss Eisley's Cantina um, and all those gorgeous minifigures that come with this set um, and obviously the do-back as well. Um, so let's get into this review and the first thing we're going to take a look at are the minifigures. Okay, so first up we have our Biff Musicians and as we can see there are three of them. So all three of these are identical, the only difference being um, that two of them come with mu musical instruments. Um, so we can see the one on the left of the screen um, comes with obviously the variant of instrument that he is holding and then the Bith on the right comes with the variant of instrument that he is holding. Um, and then obviously the one in the center um, is not holding a uh, musical instrument. Okay, so let's take a 360 view of the Bith. And we can see some basic back print in there and that awesome mould for that head continuing around to the rear. And back around to the front so you can see again that front torso print in. Um, and indeed that great mould for obviously the head and the printing detail um, and different colours around the face and on the eyes you can see the eyes have printing on them as well um, the two white pupils per um, eye there is also I believe a darker um, print on there as, as well um, but yeah Great um, representation of the Bith, um, those three minifigures. Let's have a look at our next minifigure now. Okay, so next up we have Han Solo. Um, and this is not a new figure to this set. This is the same Han Solo that came in the Millennium Falcon, or comes in the Millennium Falcon Microfighter set. Um, so again, you can see that printing um, across the torso and down into the legs. So again, some very good printing. Okay, so let's have a 360 view. So obviously we can see there that Han Solo comes with the blaster pistol. And the printing continuing around to the rear of the torso. And he does come with a dual sided face print, so there's the first version of that. And they're looking at the second variant of that face printing. Okay, so the next minifigure and obviously plays a key role in that iconic scene with Han Solo is Greedo. Um, so there we can see some awesome print into the torso and down into the legs and obviously that fantastic moulded um, head there. And he has some awesome, you've got to take my word for this, it's very difficult to see, but his eyes. Um, it looks like he has some printing which are inset. Um, actually within the eyes um, then with kind of a clear translucent bubble um, across the front of the eyes that's certainly the way it appears but it does look particularly awesome okay and looking at the side view again he comes with a blaster pistol round to the rear some pretty basic print into the rear of the torso and finally round to the other side okay so I'm going to attempt to try to show you some of that eye detail, so let's see if we can kind of get in there. And I'm not sure how much of this we're going to pick up, really, but as I'm moving this around, I'm hoping that um, some of that detail um, will obviously come out uh, when this is obviously 
uploading and you're viewing it on a bigger screen than what I am as opposed to what I'm looking at and my on my camcorder um, but trust me there is some cool printing um, in those eyes okay so next up we have Luke Skywalker so he comes with his blue light saber um, and those binoculars that he's holding in his left hand so we're just going to remove those so that we can take a closer look at Luke and the printing detail. Okay, so better look at Luke himself now. So again, a new variant um, of Luke to this set. So we can see um, some good printing to represent the robe um, across the front, which obviously continues down into his legs. And some basic printing continuing around to the rear of the torso. And Luke does come with two um, face print variants, so that's obviously the first one there. So let's take a look at the second one now. Okay, and there's the second variant of a face print into Luke Skywalker. So that is Luke Skywalker. Okay, so next up we have Obi Wan Kenobi, um, and again there with the blue lightsaber. So I'm just going to remove that again, so we can see the printing better. Okay, and now we get a better look at that printing. Great detailing on the face of Obi-Wan. Um, and obviously, continuing down into the torso printing, representing obviously there you can see the robes, and they look particularly awesome, continuing down into the legs, um, and obviously the leg printing representing the bottom of the robes. So, great job with the printing on this particular minifigure. And round to the rear, so we can see some basic printing to the rear of that torso, which obviously represents the um, robe again. And you can see the hood. So Obi-Wan does not come with a second variant face print, so what you see there is uh, what it is, but it is some awesome printing to the face. And we can see those white pupils really standing out, so adding to that detail is so that is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay, so our final minifigure is this awesome looking uh, sand trooper. And um, as you can see there, I've zoomed out because I just wanted to show you in this shot, obviously what he's holding there in his hand. This is for when he is riding a do-back. So I believe this is some kind of um, balance stick, but I may be wrong. And if I am, then obviously I look forward to you correcting me down in the comments. So I'm just gonna remove that from his hand. Um, so that we can take a closer look at this Sand Trooper. So now we can take a closer look at the Sand Trooper and uh, what can I say? Well, you can see there for yourself some absolutely awesome printing um, across the entire torso, legs, helmet, um, and indeed the um, chevron um, on his shoulder here. That's uh, printed too. Obviously we have the printing of the Sand Trooper and then obviously um, the tan marks, which is obviously representing the sand stroke dirt marks um, to obviously his um, armour. Um, obviously we have some sort of insignia up here um, on his chest also. Um, so let's just carry on and have a look at a 360 view. Okay, from the side there we can obviously see the print in here and this obviously is material. Same material you would normally get on a cape. Um, you can see there on his back, his backpack. So let's have a look at the rear to get a better look at that. Okay, so now looking at the rear, we get a, like I said, a better look at that backpack. Okay, so just removing the backpack, you can see how that is held into position. So I'm just gonna remove that so we can look at that uh, rear torso printing. Okay, so there we go. And finally back round to the front, so we now remove the helmet so we can take a look at the face printing. There we go, so now we can see the face of the Sand Trooper and it is just a single sided face print. Okay, as you can see there is also a blaster rifle, this normally just clips onto the saddle of the Dubak. Um, but as you can see the Sand Trooper also comes with the blaster. Okay, so next up we have the do-back. 
um, as we can see here. So obviously here we have the saddle in position um, and obviously the reins to control the do back. Um, so a couple of things to point out. First of all, if we look around at that mouth detail in there, uh, obviously we can see the teeth uh, within the mouth. Um, and this obviously does move as you can see and close like so. So we can obviously have that mouth in the open position or that closed position. Um, obviously like that. Um, you should be able to pick up some of the printing detailing um, around the legs and on the tail here. Um, and obviously the printed eye detail in there and round to the nose, the nostrils. And obviously more print in there continuing down the other side into that tail. Okay, so the things that you can do with this is obviously it comes with these reins. These just simply clip into place here. I'll just pull that off. You can see that there. So that's what that fits onto. So let's remove that rein in its entirety. So there we go. You can see that. And that's just simply this flexible piece, rubberized. Set that off to one side. Um, next thing, obviously, is we have the saddle in detail here. Um, obviously, which I pointed out with the sand trooper, um, there are, or well, there is the clip there to hold that blaster rifle in position. So what we can do is remove the saddle. So let's just take that off. There we go. You can see obviously the um, studs there that it attaches to. It's just simply built on a plate. So if we set the saddle off to one side, so what we have now is. Four slopes, all in a similar colour or same colour. So we can attach these to the top body of the dewback, like so. Okay, so that's obviously what he looks like now. Um, obviously, without the saddle piece, saddle piece rather, without that saddle. Okay guys, so that is our do-back. Okay, and finally, sorry, we get to see the, obviously the sand tr trooper now in the saddle on top of the do-back. Okay, so now on to the cantina itself, and again, this is a, I think, a great representation, obviously, of the cantina from the scene within the Star Wars film. Um, there are a number of features on this set, which I'm going to attempt to remember them all, and obviously share with them, them with you now. Um, so, I guess the first thing to point out, basic thing, is you can have this in multiple situations. So, this is all flat. We can then, these are on hinge pieces. So, if we turn each side in like so and we can have it completely folded up like this um, and if I just spin this round now if you get to see a view of what this looks like from obviously the exterior we have the feed-in station here for the do-back so in here is a large bone see there so that just sits in there inside that little feeding station and um, we have this piece here um, which is attached and I'll show you that in a second because that does come off and around to the side there and back around to the front so let's just open back up again so I'm just going to remove this from the rear and just simply sorry clips on there is a clip there just bringing this around to the front so I believe this is some sort of um, moisture sensor um, again if I have got that wrong please feel free to correct me down in the comments um, but I believe that's what this is um, the top part up here does spin like so um, but apart from that this P 
piece in the middle spins, but it is obviously a fixed structure. So you can have that separately off to one side um, to obviously represent what's in the scene um, or um, clip it back into the rear. Like so, here that clip into place. So back round to the front of the structure again. So I think if we start from this side and uh, we will move a along. So just zooming in. So this is the uh, actual bar. So this is the bar scene. Actually one thing to point out. So one thing that I think Lego could have done. Um, I think there's one crucial minifigure that's missing from this set in this scene and that is the actual bartender. Um, because of those that you have seen the actual movie will understand that certainly in my opinion um, the bartender um, plays kind of a, uh, a crucial and iconic role um, in the actual movie. Um, but again we can see obviously some of the detailing um, around um, the bar. We can zoom in here. Um, there is actually the pistol here. Um, just behind the bar attached to the register so we'll put that round there you can pick up the register here that is a sticker um, obviously a lot of detailing um, towards the rear of the bar um, back here with various equipment to make the um, drinks that are obviously on sale in it's a great bot and um, gold pieces that are utilized obviously there's a clear translucent mug there um, at the rear here there are two drawers just tip that forward down in here there are two drawers and if we open that top one you can see in there there are two gold pieces which undoubtedly are going to be representing some sort of currency okay so that's our bar area moving over to one of the booth areas um, so this is really where our musicians um, are going to be um, standing and playing their musical instruments. Um, we have a number of things in here. There's a lot of detailing. You can see um, at the rear. Um, you'll see this throughout this set. There are lamps and there are also other lights um, that are on the walls and obviously various jars, etc. Um, throughout the structure. I believe this here is Apologies, this piece here is a musical instrument, some sort of drum um, or something. Okay, over into the next booth. So this is the iconic booth. So this is where Greedo and Han Solo are obviously having their conversation. And um, ultimately this is uh, where Greedo obviously meets his demise. Um, but again, great detailing. Um, we can see here um, the bricks that are used to build the kind of armchairs that they're sat in so not just a basic lego chairs been thrown in there they are actually built we obviously have the table piece here again with a translucent piece here representing um, some kind of drink again lamp detailing um, and again that's just replicated um, on the other side um, over there okay moving over to what is the final section um, of the cantina which we have here um, so if we tilt that round this does a number of things first of all this is the main entrance so this is actually a door so we open that by this lever here so if we just simply pull that that will open the door so I know obviously some uh, runners in there so that just simply slides across and again we can simply close that like so but this front door piece is also um, on a hinge so we can open that up like so so now we can start to obviously see inside uh, get a better look in there let's try and get a bit more light in so we can see inside there there are a couple of chairs again some more detailing with lamps etc um, and again if we zoom in there we go so some more detailing in there. Um, now the other thing that this set does do, you can see again the iconic dome on the top, uh, but this is also on a hinge, so that we can open that up like so. 
Um, so it gives us great access inside, obviously, to put some minifigures in there. And what that also is going to do is give me a little bit more light. There we go. So we can see that area um, back in there again towards the rear. Okay, so now looking at the set, obviously, with Han Solo and Greedo in the booth having the... Um, having the conversation. Um, so another function of this set. I'm going to put it around to the side view. Put that around there and remove the moisture sensor. So back where the feed-in station was. So this is actually on a couple of Technic pieces and that pushes forward like so. You can slide that in and out. So what that actually does, well you can see there now. So those boos um, can come out like so. So again, if we look at that from the front shot, if I push that from the rear, we can see those boos coming out. Okay, so finally to go with this set, we have Luke's Land Speeder, and again, an awesome recreation of this. Um, some great use of colours. Um, and I have to say stickers as well, sticker colour scheme and positioning um, I think is very good. So let's just take a 360 view. Okay, so just pointing out some of the detailing now, so if we just tip this over, as you can just see you know, the use of some of those um, tiles on top there. Um, the front one here sits on top of two black studs just to raise it. And we have these tube, flexible tube pieces, two of those, which go around obviously the front of the speeder there. Okay, just zooming in, we have a sticker there. And while we're in that position, we can see down into the um, cabin of the speeder. So again, a sticker in the middle there, and representing the control panel. We obviously have two seats, um, Luke's there, obviously where he flies the speeder from, um, and then the obviously passenger seat there, which is where Obi Wan's going to be sitting. Um, sticker detail in there on the engine, so that's obviously the centre engine. More sticker detail in there, and uh, we have some stick a detail in here and round onto the other engine again just same replicated on the other side so just looking at the underside the undercarriage of the speeder again we have these translucent clear curved plates which obviously give it the illusion that it is hovering and uh, the, I guess one of the features on this, I could call it the main feature really is to the rear here, if we just simply tilt this back, it easily removes the engine section there, uh, which opens up to give us a compartment and that is used to store the lightsabers. So we can put in there obviously Luke Skywalker's and Obi-Wan Kenobi's um, lightsabers and their hilts. Um, and also Luke's binoculars. Okay, and then just simply replace the engine, um, the rear engine, like so. Okay, so finally there we get to now see with Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi inside the speeder. Okay guys, there we go. So that is Moss Osley's Cantina set 75052. Um, hopefully you did enjoy this review. If you did, please do go ahead and give it that thumbs up. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, go ahead and click it now. I really do um, thank you for doing that. 
Um, like I said all the way through, leave any comments, um, correct me if I've made any obviously mistakes or errors. Um, and any other comments, questions, please do leave those. Um, and I guess the one final thing is if you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Cheers!